1922, English archaeologist Howard Carter was on the verge of ruin. After five fruitless years digging in the harsh Egyptian desert, his patron, Lord Carnarvon, was ready to withdraw his funding. Almost beyond all hope, Carter and a water boy stumbled upon the steps of a long lost grave. As his team began to dig furiously around the site, revealing intact seals and hieroglyphs, Carter knew that he was about to make one of the greatest finds in archaeological history. Buried and forgotten for more than 3,300 years, the ancient pharaoh Tutankhamun lay mummified in his tomb, surrounded by indescribable treasures. Unlike many grander tombs, Tutankhamun's had remained largely untouched and unpilfered. Carter and his team found more than 5,000 items in the tomb, including a solid gold sarcophagus, death mask, statues, jewelry, fans, and other riches. One of these items, a gilded wooden throne, provides one of the richest windows into a most unique period in Egyptian history. It tells us the fascinating story of Tutankhamun, his lost dynasty, and the death of a god. This tender scene between a young couple seems as new as the day it was created over 3,300 years ago. It is engraved into the back of a wooden throne gilded in gold and silver, embellished with colored glass, precious stones, and enamel. A young man lounges in his chair, his arm loosely slung over its back, and he looks gently into the eyes of the woman. She is bending over, reaching her right arm out to caress his shoulder, anointing him with the perfume that she's carrying in her left hand. The richness of their clothes, their bejeweled collars and elaborate crowns with uraei, or stylized Egyptian cobras, indicate their royal and divine status. A sun sits high above them, itself also adorned with the divine Uraeus. It stretches out its many arms towards the couple. Some of the rays are holding Ankhs, a cross with a loop on top, the hieroglyph signifying life. This scene breaks so many of the strict laws Egyptian art had adhered to for thousands of years. Instead of somewhat rigid and dignified poses, the couple exude a casual, relaxed, and intimate attitude. Instead of idealized physiques, the man is portrayed with a rounded belly. Both figures correctly have a right and left foot, an attempt at greater realism. Traditional Egyptian art would often paint the feet with two big toes facing outward, hence in effect painting two left or two right feet. All of these stylistic elements, and most importantly the presence of the sun disk, are iconic of an Egyptian style of art that coincided with a brief but momentous period in Egypt's long and ancient history. The two figures in the scene are none other than Tutankhamun and his loving queen and half-sister Ankhesenamun. Tutankhamun is better known to us as the boy King Tut, who became far more influential in death than he ever was in life. The two figures are identified by name, in their respective cartouches, oval frames which highlight a royal or divine name within. Tutankhamun had a double cartouche. The left reads his name, Tutankhamun, while the right reads Nebkeperure, his throne or divine name. We can see the same cartouche inscribed into the walls of his tomb and on many of his funerary treasures. Next to the woman, we see her cartouche, Ankhesenamun. You might recognize the Ankh symbol we saw earlier with the sun rays. As a side note, hieroglyphic writing was a system that used individual signs or hieroglyphs which could be read as either pictures, as symbols for objects, or as symbols for sounds. Finally, the sun itself is identified by a double cartouche as Aten, mirrored on both sides of the sun disk. Aten was an aberration of a god who should never have existed. The Egyptians had for millennia worshipped a full pantheon of gods. Osiris, the mummified god of the underworld, Horus, the falcon-headed god of the sky, Amun-Ra, the hawk-headed god of the sun, Anubis, the jackal-headed god of the dead. There were countless gods and goddesses for various functions, and though different gods would gain prominence at different times, Egypt was fundamentally a polytheistic society. One man defied all this. He was the pharaoh of the 18th dynasty in a period called the New Kingdom of Egypt. He gave himself the name Akhenaten in service to his one and only god Aten. 
Aten was represented as a sun disk, and Aten had absorbed aspects of the other older god, like Amun-Ra. Akhenaten was one of the earliest recorded monotheists in human history, and his was a jealous god. To symbolize a break from the old gods and old ways, Akhenaten founded a new capital city called El Amarna, which gave rise to the Amarna style of art. The Amarna style was characterized by a move away from the traditional rigidity and stylized imagery of Egyptian art. It featured greater realism, naturalism, intimacy, and artistic freedom. One such example is the bust of Akhenaten's queen, the beautiful Nefertiti, who continues to enthrall visitors in the Neues Museum in Berlin. This is also the style we see on the back of Tutankhamun's throne, for Tutankhamun was Akhenaten's son and heir. Unfortunately, Akhenaten's rejection of the old gods threw Egypt into great turmoil, and he died when Tutankhamun was still very young. At that time, the boy was still called Tutankhaten, believed to mean the living image of Aten. In 1332 BCE, Tutankhaten ascended the throne at the age of 8 or 9. Too young and weak to resist the tides of dissent against his father's cult of Aten, Tutankhaten presided over the restoration of the old religion. Under the influence of his powerful and much older advisors, I and Horemheb, Tutankhaten moved the capital of Egypt from Amarna back to Memphis and encouraged the cult to die off. He even changed his name to Tutankhamun, meaning the living image of Amun, referring to Amun-Ra, the original Egyptian god of the sun. Aten's iconography on this throne is one of the last times it was ever depicted and must have been created during the early days of Tutankhaten's reign. With it also ended the Egyptian experiment with a different kind of art. Tutankhamun died young, at the age of 19. He had never been healthy, perhaps due to the Egyptian royal custom of intermarriage, and died most likely of a severe infection from a broken leg. He left no heir as he and his wife had only suffered two failed pregnancies. He was buried quickly in a small tomb as his grand tomb had yet to be completed and was sealed away, ideally forever. Those that took power after him deliberately sought to erase him and his father from all official records, and Tutankhamun became yet another name swallowed by the sands of time. The discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb revived a wave of Egyptomania that started with the ancient Greeks and Romans and carries on to today. Blockbuster exhibitions of his treasures have been shown across the world with unprecedented viewership. Tutankhamun's treasures, including his throne, are a portal to a lost world, a bridge across time and space connecting us with an ancient people who also admired beauty, love, grandeur, and spirituality. His story, and the story of Amarna's brief and tragic flowering, will continue to inspire us for millennia to come. What is it about ancient Egypt that captures your imagination? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to support this channel by clicking the red subscribe button under the video so that you'll be notified when a new video is up. Bye!